Floyd Mayhem Garage here. It's been a bit of a long day. I did quite a few things, but I also didn't do much at the same time. <laughs> so, ran to town. Uh, I found a front axle for sale. And I've been having some thoughts on my crew cab. Oh, you can kind of see that in the dark over there. I bought a bunch of stuff to make my crew cab a dually. I thought it'd be pretty interesting, a crew cab short bed dually. But I'm kind of not entirely sure on that project. I'm, I'm really, I really like how it looks as a single wheel. So I think I want to keep it a single wheel, for now at least. I mean, I do still have everything for the dually conversion. So that still may happen. But one of the main things is with the dually conversion, is I don't have a good set of tires. So I've got to buy six tires for that. Otherwise, it's, it's not, there's not a really, it's a, it's a pretty big product. I'm gonna have to modify the beds. I'm gonna have to make those uh, dually flares work. Uh, the front end that I have, which is that Dana 60 dually front end, needs completely rebuilt. Uh, the ring and pinion might actually even need replaced on that too. I haven't torn it apart to look yet. So I have been kind of on the outlook or lookout for an axle and I found one. So I found the hard hard side to find, which is the front axle. So this is out of a 90s uh, Cummins truck, uh, like a 90 to 93 era. So it is a Dana 60. It's kingpin style, lockable hubs with three, well, and I think they're all lockable hubs, but 354 gears, which is what I want to mainly go with on this truck because the gearing right now with the Cummins, it really helped with the five speed, but the 410, so this just doesn't do the greatest on the highway. It's a higher RPM than I would like. So I've been wanting to get some different axles. So now I need to just find a, either a Dana 60 or a Dana 70 rear axle single wheel with 354 gears, which should actually be quite a bit easier to find than one of these. So yeah, did that today while I was in town. Uh, I got my torque converter. I was having a torque converter rebuilt, picked that up. That is for the Cornet project, if that ever gets going here, whenever the weather cooperates, because I still got to pick that up. So that's happening. Picked that up today. And while I was in town, I ended up stopping by Taylor's new job, because it turns out I was pretty much right down the street from that, wasn't too far away. So that was pretty cool. Hung out and talked with him for a while. So that's what took pretty much most of the day. But that was good. So he's been busy with all of his work change stuff that he's been doing, new jobs, things, this and that. So training. So it's good. I haven't seen him in a little bit. It's just been me out here in the shop. So as that's what I'm continuing. So thought process, got the axle. Um, eventually the idea here, main thing with that axle is I want to change it with the crew cab axle, uh, front and rear, of course. And then that front with four tens is going to end up in the off-road truck. So, cause I put that Dana 44 in there for now thinking it would be a while before I got this Dana 60 out of my crew cab. Well, now that I've got that axle, I got to find the rear axle and this project is pretty much underway. It'll just be a matter of doing it at that point. So when I got home, grabbed the forklift or the skid steer with the forks on it and brought this guy around because I cut off the rear spring perches on the off-road truck because they were those homemade flip shackle crappy weld together ones. So I got these guys. I'm gonna cut these off this frame. Um, they do still hang pretty low off of these. I was kind of looking, curious what it would take to flip these over and run them that way. Uh, might get into the bed floor that way, but I think it would put this a little bit up, but I, I don't think that's too big of a deal. That might be a future project for now because I am gonna end up bolting these on to the other one, but for now, I'm just going to put it back on a stock, and that'll give me, what is that, four inches of clearance over what they had set up on that truck. So, yeah, let's get to uh, cutting. These bad boys need to come off.
It's not bad right here in front of the shop, but kind of all around, it is horrible today. It's super windy. So, good time, even though it's, you know, sunshiny and nice outside, it's too, too, uh, too windy out there to be doing anything. So, got the off-road truck in here, and, uh, yeah, I got those spring perches off of that frame. So, I'm gonna pull the, uh, end cap off here. I ended up just, uh, uh, nothing's welded yet. I ended up just tech, uh, not even tech, uh, screwing it on. Screws there and screws there and did that on both sides. So I just gotta pull off a couple screws and this whole end comes off again. And then that'll allow me access to the frame down here. Uh, so I can get the spring perches back on and get these rear uh, hangers sitting where they should be. So that's exciting, which is gonna be crazy because it's really gonna drop the back of the truck down quite a bit. Which is also going to fix pinion angles and stuff like that. So that's, that's going to be really neat. And then, yeah. So hopefully that shouldn't take too long. I'm just going to bolt those on. Uh, I mean, the holes should be identical. They should just literally go right on. And then it'll be tackling this body. So, as always, you know, I spent a whole lot of time making sure I measured this real straight. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be perfect. So, I have to do a little bit of tweaking there. And I wasn't figuring... I'd get this together real perfectly anyways, but I'll get that, uh, I grind them, grind them out, because this one's got a bunch of that, like, uh, original filler and stuff in there, but get them cleaned up, ground down, and then welded back together, and weld the floor back together, and yeah, I think that's, that's where we're at, see how long this takes, and we'll go from there. That changes the ride heights by quite a bit. <laughs> so, don't have any of this tightened up yet. We're just sitting there. So, but bolts in, uh, we're together, and we're on its own weight, even with all the stuff in the bed. And boy, did that really drop the back of this thing down. But spring, you know, position looks way happier than what it was before. Because, you know, it was with the axle or the, the shackle flip, uh, that basically gave it seven or eight inches by flipping that around. And so it took the whole leaf spring and it was sitting like this, uh, which really messed up the pinion angles. So this thing had a horrible shake when I drove it. Uh, terrible, terrible vibration from the uh, uh, driveline. And trying to get going was the worst. Uh, when you kind of that initial power, uh, it would really wrap up and start shaking really bad. So this is exciting. So it is really low though, but now that we're here, um, this is a good time to maybe trim up the fenders too. I know like this front edge is close-ish, it's probably fine, but with just the rest of the wheel, I might want to just arch that off a little bit, or leave it, we'll see. Um, and I like the back, I always thought this was goofy, just a, a nice sharp square corner. So I'll work on that as well. But the big thing, now that it's kind of back to the suspension setup I wanted it uh I can actually get a lift kit for this thing now I've already got the rear leaf springs so that's good um I just got to order the lift kit for the front and I think what I'm going to end up doing because it looks like it's going to be more cost effective actually is to buy a complete lift kit utilizing blocks in the back uh because that gives me all the hardware I need that gives me the the steering block for the front end uh that gives me leaf springs that gives me shocks and I was looking into buying all that stuff individually, and it actually costs more to buy it all individually. So, uh, plus, you know, then it comes with the, the correct length shocks as well for a 4-inch lift. So, yeah, that's going to be the next thing for this. Um, I've been looking at some axles for the crew cab. I purchased a front axle, which means the Stana 44 that I put in here, I was planning on running that for a while. Um, I think, hopefully, I can just end up swapping this out with the crew cab if I get that swapped soon. And then I'll have a Dana 60 in the front of this thing. 
or at least you know maybe i still will run this axle for a little while until i get that swapped but if i end up breaking it it won't be that big of a deal because i'll basically be ready with having that dana 60 to go in so this is cool this is exciting this is a uh, definitely a pretty neat budget build so i should probably clean the bed out one of these days i need to find a place to put all those seats probably half of them if not i don't know all of them probably need to just be thrown away uh i think come springtime here i might be uh might be time for another roll off i got probably a lot of stuff i can just throw away so yeah i think uh now we're ready i gotta get this end cap prepped so got this just you know partially cleaned up to bare metal um i'll try to get some of this kind of ground down get it to fit as close together as i can and then i think i'm going to tack it together so yeah let's make that happen making some progress all right chilling out too so heater's on but uh not spending a whole lot of time on the floor itself that i really i'm not really too worried about how that's going to look uh spent a little bit more time on the body uh this side i had a decent little gap here uh that i needed to fill up but i trimmed down to the bottom quite a bit and we're getting kind of off so i just decided that was good enough so i left that i can fill that up this side is pretty good now, that side was bent pretty good so it didn't go back together as well this side went back together pretty well and got a dent down here Oop, I run out of diesel, but got a little bit of a gap at the bottom. Not bad. I'll uh, finish stitching that back together and may or may not see body filler on this. We'll see. Yeah, and then some pretty good gaps in the floor. Um, I'm thinking just structurally wise, I may might take part of the old floor and lay it over here and just booger weld the hell out of it just so it's structural. Or just keep cobbling them up on here and grind them smooth-ish and call it good. So realistically, this doesn't need to be too terribly strong. As long as there's a lot of strength in here, um, it'll hold the tailgate up. And then it, uh, the bottom section being the kind of channel that it is, it is going to be bolted to the, uh, the frame. So should work pretty good. Yeah, that's where we're at. Keep on welding. That was eventful. So, as it turns out, since last time uh, you saw me working on this bad boy, uh, I parked it outside and I forgot to film it. And, uh, or you know, forgot to film with it to do a follow up. And then it snowed and it was cold for a few days, but now it's kind of nice and sunny for a moment. We're supposed to get some more snow again, but I can do a finish up video now. <laughs> uh, I got this thing, been working on it. It's still not lifted, it's still same there. But I was working on the bed here, and since it snowed, this is all nice and rusty now, but that's not really the end of the world. Um, I'm probably just going to keep stitch welding it and grind it smooth-ish and call it good, and rattle can black over it. But I also started standing on this because I was really confused with this truck. So you, you look at part of it, um, you know, inside the bed, obviously baby blue. We got baby blue up here uh, through, I think it's the fender. Yeah, we got dark blue up here on top of the fender. And I think the front radiator support is light blue. The other door had parts of dark blue on it or something. But, so I started sanding this down and amazingly it's baby blue and dark blue, but dark blue, looks like it's over the baby blue but it's only it literally stops right here so i have no idea what was happening with this truck um i was just curious to see what it looked like under here and in hopes of kind of getting this whole thing sanded smooth kind of got me into the inspiration i was thinking of doing it just black but i might end up trying to do some sort of like patina style paint job on this could be really fun because of course with this truck if i screw that up it really doesn't matter the whole thing is gonna go flat black anyways so i might play with that in the future but until then this is where we're at i gotta get this back in at the shop uh garage at some point here uh finish welding this up grind it smooth call that good um i've really got to touch up the middle here i've only got all this tack welded a few tacks here uh i got a big gap here i'm probably honestly just gonna leave that or i might just 
kind of cap it and do sort of something ugly, but I at least get this all welded back together so it doesn't fall off. And then of course I gotta get some taillights back in it. I gotta find a non-broken tailgate for this side. Um, this whole bed side is loose and bent, so I'm probably gonna have to maybe weld a support in there because we got some rust in here or something. We'll see, I'll have to play with that. But I got quite a bit of movement out of this. So yeah, that's where I stand. Well, uh, I'd really like to get the lift kit on this thing. So hopefully that happens soon ish been working on some other stuff so you'll see those videos coming up so uh stay tuned for those and until then we'll see you